Oh, that's a bit chucky. Okay, so here we go. A bit of music, and I'll see you on the other side of this quick right. introduction. Okay. Here we go. Welcome to another episode of the Good Listening To Show. Your life and times with me, Chris Grimes. The storytelling show that features The Clearing, where all good questions come to get asked and all good stories come to be told. And where all my guests have two things in common. They're all creative individuals and all with an interesting story to tell. There are some lovely storytelling metaphors. A clearing, a tree, a juicy storytelling exercise called 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, some alchemy, some gold, a cheeky bit of Shakespeare, and a cake. So it's all to play for. So yes, welcome to the Good Listening To Show, your life and times with me, Chris Grimes. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we shall begin. Oh, yes, indeedy doody. Welcome to another episode of Your Life and Times with me, Chris Grimes. And as if by magic, you'll see what I'm going to be doing here shortly, snagged in my Zoom hole live here on Facebook. And for the Buzzsprout platform that the podcast is eventually hosted on and UK Health Radio, I'm very, very delighted to welcome to the good listening to Clearing Today, my esteemed friend, colleague, lovely human being, actor, magician and magic advisor, Mr. Peter Clifford. The sound of one man clapping. The sound of one man clapping. (laughs) (laughs) You are very, very... Good afternoon. And it is a sunny one at that, is it not? Yes, lovely. And if you remember... Just just right. Just want to be indoors right now, shielding the sun so there's no... Yes, thank you for hiding indoors to speak yeah. to me. So, yes, I, I, we have go back many years, actually. We met on Richard de Costa's boat once and we had a really lovely quick exchange of ideas. I've seen you at the tobacco factory in Shakespeare, at the tobacco factory many times, too. I know you were in um, Twelfth Night. I'm thinking, actually slightly awkward, I didn't see that one, but I'm guessing you might have been an ague cheek or what? what might no, be? no, no. I, um, I was uh, Antonio in that one. Yes, good and I, memory. I, please. Funny enough, I did. I did. I played Feste in one that was in Bath the same the same year. So I did Twelfth Night twice in we, the year. Well, there you go. You're very versatile. We I've know done, that. I've done 12, 12 productions with Shakespeare at Tobacco Factory. So ah, one wow. of those you might have seen. Which is a real Andrew Hilton institution here in Bristol, where we're both mm. based. So if people want to Google Shakespeare at the Tobacco Factory, that was an extraordinary institution. So it went for about how many years did it go in total? Still going. It's still going. It's just it's just morphed into a touring company now that uh, that has uh, a, a time at the tobacco factory. So yes. it still performs there, but it goes on tour now. Wonderful. And you are a magician and an actor. You do close up mm-hmm. magic as well, which I know t- to my own cost. I'm kidding, because we met, if you remember, just before the zombie apocalypse. Do you remember we had a coffee and a breakfast together? It was almost two days before the zombie apocalypse hit yeah. in terms of lockdown. And you do close up magic. And that was the day my pants mysteriously disappeared. (laughs) And I'm still wearing them. (laughs) I'm I'm still wearing them. The big reveal. (laughs) Here they are. Chris's pants have been returned. So, yes, you and and, sorry, I'm being I'm I'm just messing with both of our heads here. But you are a a very uh, skillful and adept magician. You were about to do a a live show that then got postponed um, because of the pandemic. I was. Yeah. Magical mythologies. That was uh, it was going to be on at the wardrobe theatre. Uh, it was sold out, and uh, and then I did the dress rehearsal on the Monday, and then that Monday night was when everything locked down because I was going to open on the Tuesday and all locked down. We I was sort of speaking to them beforehand, thinking that it was probably not going to happen, and also yes. I was beginning to feel a little bit socially irresponsible being on stage and cramming people into a room just because I was there. Yes, it, was yes. it was a very it was a strange time. And in um, fact, coming full circle, j- just literally two days ago, I was stuffed in a venue again for the first time in all that period. I went to see the Bond film, actually. I'll give no spoilers, but it was my first experience back in a, quite a, a packed auditorium, actually. Mm. Um, so it's quite interesting how you know, the world hasn't quite fixed itself yet or normalised, nor will it. But it's... No, yes. no, it's still a strange time. And, it's, and audiences are strange. I did a tour of The Three Musketeers recently, and, yes. and the audiences for that were sporadic, <laughs> so that was it was it was odd people weren't quite 
um, coming back with confidence yet. So if I made that was a bit all for one, and where is everyone? A, a very pin. much so. Very much so. <laughs> all, for, all for one. All for we'll one. <laughs> the sound of one man clapping. Exactly. You were there. You were there. It was, that was you. It was you. And, and I'm surprised. So, I'm surprised we haven't actually worked together. I'm surprised we haven't been on stage together. Or, or have we? And I've forgotten. No. Ah. No, no. We did a short film. We did a short film together. We did. You were a zookeeper. So we have. I was thinking we hadn't, but we have. But we've yes. never been on stage together. But we were. Yes. And and by the way, just to blow a tiny bit more smoke at you before we get on the open road of the storytelling construct of the good listening to your life and times mm. of Grimes. Well, I'm very very much looking forward to bathing you in the sunlight as we we find out the man behind well the story behind the man that is Peter Clifford um you are also a magic advisor which is quite um quite an enigmatic title and I know that in your wonderful illustrious career you've also done the magic advising uh, mm. to the likes of Darren Brown and David Blaine. So do you want to just tell us a little bit about that? Well, yeah, I was a, a magical advisor for both Darren <laughs> Brown and David <laughs> Blaine. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, yeah, that was um, very lovely. Well, Darren, Darren and I were friends, have been friends for a long time. We were friends before the TV stuff happened. And then um, we just sort of carry, we used to chat about ideas and come up with ideas. And then when the TV stuff happened, we, we carried on doing that. Uh, then he, moved to London and I stayed in Bristol and I, we still work together occasionally. Not so much now, we just sort of meet up socially. But then I was doing a lecture at a magic convention and David Blaine happened to be in the audience of that. And he came up to me afterwards and just went, yeah, Peter, I'd like you to come and work with me in the States. So, uh, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> I, I sort of took it as an actor saying, let's do lunch, which I, I always say <laughs> As, a, as an actor, me, that what it means is, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy your company. And if we happen to do lunch together one time, that would be fine. But let's not get our diaries out just yet. <laughs> it sort of feels a bit like that. So I was thinking I was thinking it was just like that. But but no, because three weeks later, I was sat in New Orleans and then New York with, with David just working on working on stuff. And that I did that for about six years. Gosh, um, that must have been some old lecture you were giving, because to, to was, entice the likes of him to say, "I need you as my advisor," you know, it was you. it was a it was a fun lecture. It was fun. I think that's it was very different to all the other magic lectures because I didn't show any tricks. I just talked about stagecraft for magicians, and and I talked about uh, stagecraft and character and uh, building a narrative structure in an evening. That because magic doesn't inherently have a narrative structure yes. especially if you're doing it so instead of doing a trick and a trick and a trick I, I try I try and build in the narrative feel for the evening and so it was so it was all that uh, oh and voice and movement and all that in 20 minutes so it was a really focused intense high energy fun 20 minutes and I think that that's what and, and David happened to be thinking about wanting to do a stage show and by the um, way can I come I in can yeah, I commend yeah. you for your conversion rate of 20 minutes equals six years of work? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, we're just very, I was just very slow. I'm just very slow when I get working. <laughs> wow. And yes, I mean, that's really impressive stuff, actually. And, and uh, as you say, New Orleans and, and are, are you I mean, I know you, you went to be an actor at the Manchester Poly School of Theatre. Mm. Uh, but is that where you picked up magic or is that something that you'd done? No, no. Well? Magic. Magic came first. Magic came first. It was a, a childhood thing. And uh, I initially went to I went to Bath Tech. I did A-levels. My, the A-levels I did at school were physics and engineering, drawing and art. And I left school thinking I wanted to be a draftsman and then I uh, changed my mind mm. and was wandering around Bath, wondering what to do. And a friend of mine had left sixth form a year early and, to, and started doing a theatre arts foundation course at Bath Tech, as it was then. And uh, he said, oh, why don't you come and do this? And I thought, oh, yeah. So I thought I'd go and do that to get training in front of an audience for the magic. That was my oh. plan. By the uh, way, that wasn't the likes of... Um because we do go back way back actually because even before we knew that we knew each other we had people in common it was people like toby longworth toby toby was toby was the year above and then i went because uh, when toby worked with bill bailey i used to do magic as a, a warm-up for them so the fiddlers all oh, around gosh and by the so, way not a lot of people know this but way back when you know when the uh, toby and bill were doing the rubber bishops do you remember yeah, yeah that's that was then 
there was a fateful time, and I don't know if I've ever shared you with this, when I was just about to go to the Bristol Old Vic Theatre School and um, Bill and Toby decided to go their separate ways. And I, yeah. I did take a phone call one day where Bill Bailey asked me if I'd like to be the other rubber bishop. But I was off to, <laughs> and then Martin Stubbs did it. Because you know that thing in life, you know, what's meant for you will or won't pass you by. Uh, the best thing that ever happened to Bill, obviously, is he went solo because he is the, you know, the legend that he is now. But that oh, to Toby, to Toby, you mean, because Toby does voiceovers and he's there, you hear him all the time. What happened to Bill? Yeah, no idea. It could be a dancer like you're a magician. Bird watching, bird watching. Yeah. <laughs> no Wonderful. And he has got some parakeets as well. You mentioned bird watching there too. Yes. But anyway, uh, back so, to yeah, So yeah, um, so went to Bath Tech and halfway, that was a two year course. And halfway through it, I discovered that people did acting for a living uh, and preferred, and I preferred acting, well, for a living, <laughs> people did acting. <laughs> and, um, and, I, and I got caught by that and preferred it. I preferred it. I found it a, a more fulfilling um, experience and perform, performance and way of storytelling. And so, I, yeah, I, I applied for drama schools. Uh, I applied to the old Vic but, and went on the weekend there but I'd already got into Manchester and I'd lived I grew up around here so I was going uh, away wanting to go elsewhere yes yeah, 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 yeah. which I mean, it was great yeah I went to Manchester had a fantastic time wonderful so let's get you going if I may then on the uh, storytelling construct so first of all it's going to be a clearing then there's a tree we shake your tree see which apples fall out how'd you like them apples those are the storytelling construct of the five four three two one alchemy gold cheeky bit of Shakespeare a sort of bonus squirrel and then a cake Hurrah. So let's get you going. As a reward. Excellent. Where is, what is a clearing like for you, Peter Clifford, literally or metaphorically, please? Um, yeah, so clearing is going to be Cheryl Downs is going to be where we're going, um, especially on such a lovely day. Uh, I thought about, because I wasn't quite sure what it was and what I was going to be doing there, but Cheryl Downs has been a constant in my life and it's sort of my favourite place really it's um it's between sort of Avebury and Melksham uh, uh, and it's 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 a white horse so if you drive along the A4 before you get to Avebury there's on the right there's a there's a downs with a white horse on it and the village of Cheryl is just down below it, and that's where my father was born and grew up and my gran lived and um ancestors of mine have been there for for generations so the Clifford dynasty yeah, yeah. There's a there's a row. They were all sextons of the local church. There's a row of gravestones going up to the church, <laughs> and they're all they're all. There's even a Peter Stephen Clifford, which is my name. So I've got a, I've got a plot ready. Oh. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so it's, it's a small little village, and you can see it from the top of Cheryl Downs. And Cheryl Downs is just it's it's always windy, and it feels like home, and it feels it's a really clearing bracing place and it's grown with me so as a child it was it was fun and exciting we go up and run the dogs my gran had dogs and we used to go up there with them and then as a teenager you could I put a cagoule on the wrong way around and you could slide down the grass like I'd use it like a toboggan and toboggan um and now with my kids uh, go there kite flying and stuff now it's it, Cheryl Downs that's where that's where we're going I'm taking you to Cheryl Downs to the white horse I love that. And you did mention you've got a plot ready for you. Is that because you've just got a namesake there? So you've got to, you've got to just, emancipate just, the previous... Just the family. namesake. Yeah, just the namesake. I don't think I'm going to be buried there. But, so uh, the day when... My, my dad will be. I, my dad wants to be in the bench. Because that's, uh, that was... Yeah, we've got... Yeah, Sexton's... Uh, there's a book on the village of Cheryl. And there's, uh, like... You can, I can trace my ancestor, trace your ancestor. My dad's mum's side all the way back to like the 1796 we've got little wage slips and things in this in this wow. book wow as a, for a for a grave digger being a grave digger that so that's a part i've got to play one day isn't it that's got it is and when you mentioned the church sextant there and the fact you're going to dig up somebody and emancipate them from your plot because that's yours <laughs> 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 Wonderful Actually, a relative, a relative of mine died because he caught something from a corpse when he fell through a coffin. He was digging, he was digging, fell through. <laughs> That's <laughs> cheery, a cheery little afternoon conversation. <laughs> That's Actually, extraordinary a, stuff. A dead handsome. Couple. You could have saved that for your quirky or unusual fact later on. I love that. So a relative of mine oh, died damn. when he fell through a coffin. <laughs> 
We've all done oh. it, obviously. So yeah, that um, wasn't about me, though, was it? That's a, anyway, yes. And so that's that, where we're going. Cheryl Downs. And thank you for that inspiration. It is fairly local to me, I'm hearing, but I've never been there. So that's truly inspirational. I will actually seek it out. I'll come with you. We can go in real life. We'll go and fly a kite. Oh, I'd love to do that. I am a bit of a Captain Flexifoil. I've got a couple in the cupboard. I'll whip them out. Have you got a buzz? I've got a buzz kite that, that I, I was I, bought my 40th and it's just it's fantastic. No, no idea what you're talking about now. I've got a couple right. of the... I used to have a Peter Powell stunt kite. Powell stunt kite, kite. yeah. <laughs> and you, you learn quite young on. You've got to be careful how you say stunt kite, haven't you? Yes, yes, you have. Yeah. You, <laughs> Uh, that, I'm glad you know what a Peter Powell stunt kite is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I used is. to have one. A long, long tail. I used to have a long tail. It was really annoying. And you're Peter Clifford, and I don't know if you've got a long tail. OK. So, <laughs> oh, good. Yes. Moving on. Taking so up a lot of time. <laughs> Nonsense. So there we are yes. in your wonderful... Just say the name of the place again, just so it's positioned. Cheryl. Cheryl Down. Cheryl Downs. That's where we are. So if I may, and we're going to go kite flying and I, I'll take you up on that. I'm going to arrive with a tree now, a bit waiting for mm. Goddard Esk. I'm arriving with a tree. And your second bit of preparation, thank you, is to shake your tree to see which apples fall out. And this is the construct where you've had five minutes to have thought about four things that have shaped you, three mm -hmm. things that inspire you, two things that never failed to grab your attention and borrowed from the film. Oh, that's a bit burp, squirrels, you know, what never fails to grab your attention. And then a quirky or unusual fact that's not grave related or corpse related <laughs> that we couldn't possibly know about you until you tell us. And then jobs are good. And so up to you to sort of crunch on those apples as you like. Okay. okay. So is that me? Do I start now? Do I tell oh, yes. the, the, four, the four, four that shaped me? Is this? Four shapages, please. Or shapages. Uh, well, uh, family, parents, I think. Uh, uh, parents or family, that friends, it's all the, the relationship, intimate relationships of people that you are related to, I think. That, there you go. So family and parents. That's an, uh, and it's, it's an obvious one um, and is true of everyone, I think. So that's so it's obviously true of me. And they had a particular community connection, you were saying, and a church connection quite deeply, you were saying. My dad, my dad, well, with that church, in because everyone went to the church in the village, we weren't really religious, but it was, uh, yeah, so they, but my dad was also, he, so from him, I get that he was, he was in the Navy, and then he left the Navy and went and did a sit, city and girls, became a carpenter, then he was a chippy on building sites and foreman on building sites and an odd job man and a window cleaner. Then he went back to college and learned to did a degree, uh, became a teacher and then he taught woodwork and design for years. Then he stopped that, uh, started his own wooden toy making business, then stopped that um, to look after my mum uh, while she was, she was very ill. And then uh, that he's done, he's done other jobs as well. He's an occupational therapist, technician. So he's, it's a variety of jobs and I, and I and I like that in life and I and I have that too I, I find it very hard to do one thing I think one of the things that attracted me about acting is that you never stop it never you every time you every time you go to a new job if you're lucky enough to get one if you're trying to you start from scratch you start yes. from scratch and you learn you don't know the lines you don't know the other people you don't know the environment you don't know anything all you have is the experience that you bring to it. Um, and I really, I like that. And I love the, that with acting as well, I love that someone who's just fresh into it and someone who's been there for years are equal in terms of providing ideas. And that's, that's a So there's a lovely, something lovely, level about, lovely about your enjoyment of ensemble and the nature of it there about true yes, connection. It's great. It's great. And, and my mum was, sorry. I was going to say, reading between the lines, is your dad is still with us and your mum yep. is... That's correct. Yes. Yeah. My mum, my mum died. Uh, she was 52. So in 1990, so she died 31 years ago um, from cancer. Uh, but she, she was also a teacher. She'd been a teacher and taught. She taught special needs, as it's called now. <laughs> um, and and she'd looked after my brother and I when my dad was going off and doing all these other things. And from the age of four to seven, my dad had gone back to university to study to be a teacher. And my mum was bringing us up on a student grant. All we had was dad's student grant. That was the only money coming in. Um, so we were like free school meals and she managed to do that and give us really, a really good lives as well. And kept us going, it was very nice. So that was lovely. 
uh, and then and then her dying young has shaped me quite a lot as well. So, so especially I'm, I'm three years older than she was when she died now. And you just having got to that, you suddenly go, wow, that was really young. That was really young. Uh, but that so parents have shaped me, and I've got a brother, and uh, so, and but going on from them, the the second apple, if uh, if I may segue into it, is periods of of solitude, uh, sort of enforced solitude as a child, from because we when my dad came back when I was nine, he'd finished at university, and we went, we moved from Tavistock because I was born in Plymouth, so we moved from Tavistock. To Midsummer Norton and all my friends, there was no social media or anything like that. All my friends from then vanished overnight. That literally, so we we left. I left school there and, and went to a new school in a new place with no new friends and was quite a shy child. So that was quite hard. And then two years later, we were leaving that one and, and moving to another school. And all the friends that I'd made went to one school. And I went to another one on my own wow. again. And it was a it was a school where there was it was like the village feeder school. So all these ready-made friendship groups came in from all the villages around. And and I went from the school in Midsummer Norton in that town. So it was again, it took a it took a few years to um make friends. I probably made friends quicker than I remember, and it was probably a much warmer time than I remember I remember some of the some of the friends that I'd made because the, the school that I'd gone to and the school that all the friends I'd just made went to had running battles they were enemies in this small <laughs> town so all these people that were my friends were suddenly bullies they were suddenly I had to walk past them every day and they used to oh they used to push me around a bit <laughs> oh did they not give you a pass they, were... they didn't give me a pass no <laughs> no no <laughs> and there's something lovely about well the, the, the sort of quality of being a a habitual outlier there in what you experienced yeah yeah that's I think that's what it did I became I, became, I was quite now I was always quite a quiet child anyway I think quite shy quite reserved and um did it I was much more of an observer uh, than taking part uh and but by the way, the time, some, as we know some of the best actors are people who are acute observers so I think your your sense of self autonomy and 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 stillness it probably fuels you as it does many other great actors because of the ability to really listen acutely and watch possibly possibly that yes yeah and the and the desperate need for attention um <laughs> from, being, nice attention. from being on your own <laughs> but that, go that, on then bully me at least i'm getting some attention <laughs> when you're going for then that one actually that then segues into my third apple i mean i'm happy to jump back to any of these no i like i then, like the cut of your jib just keep jumping lovely is is magic so that was the thing that i don't want to say saved me but it it it, it most magicians i've met have had a time have had a period of time on their own because it is something that you practice in a solitary way, like in music, I suppose, as well. You, but, but I had a pack of cards instead of an instrument. And, and, uh, and I don't, because my gran played cards, going back to Cheryl and Village, my, my gran always played cards and she taught me to gamble when I was five. She used to, me to play pontoon for matches and things uh, when I was five and then played cribbage with her a lot. So I, I love playing cards and I like puzzles and, uh, the, the two just seemed to go together and then there was a, a sense of because uh, my parents I think because they were so focused because we didn't have a lot of money and they worked so hard there wasn't a lot of time to go oh yeah you're brilliant well done <laughs> or anything yeah, yeah, like yeah. that so but if I did I knew that if I did a card trick this I knew that if I did a card trick to my dad or my mum or my brother if I did a card trick to them and they didn't see how it was done then I'd done it well because that was the sort of point. So I was sort of getting that affirmation without them having to say anything, really. It was just... Um, wow. And, uh, and, and yeah, and shuffling the cards, there's something, there's something thera there was something therapeutic. I, I always say it stopped me from rocking. Um, <laughs> or banging my, your head my, on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. My wife, who's a psychologist, says that, yes, it's just another form of self-stimulation which as a, as a 12 and 13 year old, yes, that's, what else was I going to do? So I shuffled the pack of cards. 
and that and then that led to everything I'm doing really and sort of that that opens that gateway to performing to um it gave an avenue for my obsessions I'm, I'm quite obsessive about things uh and yeah and, and learning and it taught me how to learn learning magic taught me how how I learn things as well um, and I know that you enjoy poker to this day because we've got some friends in common and you all keep mentioning each other to me whenever I meet them there's a the chap <laughs> I play ping pong with there's the lovely you know, that's Ali Robertson there's Chris uh, Piri from you know Green Ginger as well who I've also Chris. had the great joy of talking to as well but I know you all play and Dan Dan you play no, I don't know how to play. Well, I've played poker once, but at some point I'll come and let you fleece come along, me. Come along, come along, <laughs> come along, come along, You're come thinking, along, come along, come along. Come on in, Bring come on in, cash. the water's fine, you'll be fine. <laughs> so, so we're still in the lovely canape or canopy of your trees, I believe. I've got I one more, haven't I? The, the have, one more. I, this is lovely. The one more is becoming a parent. That has shaped and made me develop and grown me and is the steepest learning curve of anything I've ever done and is absolutely wonderful so it's and, uh, and I was the at-home carer I was the primary carer for for what happened all the time that, <laughs> that's the default because because my career my job was much easier to bend around yes the needs of well, and if I may I've, I've, you've just made me think of Dick Van Dyke, let's go fly a kite. The idea of you just taking your kids <laughs> off to your magic clearing to fly a kite because you've got a sort of Dick Van Dyke sort of leave it out on, you know, cheeky Come chappiness. On. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did a bit of that. Did a bit, lot of swimming. Lot of swimming. Yeah. Lot of swimming. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that and learning from them and seeing them learn and seeing them grow. And, and how old are your little nippers now? One is 18 and the other one is 15. So my job is I'm able, I'm stepping back more and more and and I've got more time to fill with other nonsense now. Lovely to hear. Yeah, so that's, um, that, so that's the, that's the, that's my four apples that shaped me. And can I just commend you for the lovely pacing of that? That was a really lovely thing to listen to. And now three things that inspire you, Peter Clifford. Uh, learning learning inspires me one i love and it sort of doesn't matter what it is if there's some I, I really enjoy the opportunity to learn new things um again that's another attraction of being an actor is that it gives me or one the excuse to do that to learn your learning lines you're learning about other people you're learning um other stories and and then other skills to to use within that uh which is great. So learning is a huge inspiration for me or, or a huge thing that inspires me uh, right across the board. That's, um, yeah, and um, I think starting from scratch is, is, I like it. I like it a lot. So that's that. Uh, then working along with that is working with other people. So learning from other people and creating with other people and learning at the same time, learning things at the same time is, is something I really enjoy. Being in a rehearsal room is one of my favorite things. Um, it was nearly, a, it was possibly a clear, it was a possible clearing as well as being in a rehearsal room, but but I, I, nah, I just wanted it to be a bit more personal and just have a break, get out for a bit. Um, so that's the other one working with, and it and doesn't have to be rehearsal rooms either. It can be, I love working with, um, like builders and, and creating and solving problems with them and working out how things are go together and then learning different techniques and I think that comes from my dad when he was like a carpenter I've always I've always enjoyed working with wood especially I don't um, and uh, in lockdown one I built a patio that was my, that was my lockdown project was I learned to make cement and mix concrete and Built a patio at the back, so we've, so we've, we've got an out, outdoor living outside living room because so we can have people around them all be outside. That was oh, the plan. I, I was strangely available to come round. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, well, there you go. By the way, when you were talking about when you were talking about woodwork, then I was thinking of Geppetto and like you, I've made myself a son. I've made a, <laughs> I've made a child. I've made I've made myself some friends. Here they are. <laughs> Just I'm like, teaching them to play cards. I'm Love JF me. Sebastian from from Blade Runner. Is that is that is that okay? Is that that's great? Go there. Love that. 
Um, uh, so working with uh, working creating with other people that's that's inspiring. Whatever whatever that might be, but creating something with other people. By the way, you would be a lovely Geppetto. Just putting it out there, dear. <laughs> I'm just looking at excellent, you excellent, <laughs> marvelous. <laughs> that's on the list as well. So grave digger Geppetto. This is good. I'm going to end up with write this shit down. It's very characters good. that I should play. <laughs> Uh, the other thing that inspires me is deadlines. Oh, I think that's. I think, I think, again, deadlines. I find exciting and challenge. I like challenges are, are, are inspiring as well. But a deadline, a deadline will make me work, and I enjoy creating up to the wire, and then. Beyond with with shows, of course, you get the the yes. you've got lots of deadlines. It's the deadline of opening night, but then that's when you find out how it actually works. Uh, yes. If it's a live thing, how it works in front of the audience. I always think of the audience as the the final cast member that didn't bother turning up to rehearsals, <laughs> yes. so they're going to have to improvise whatever. Uh, it, whatever and coming full circle, that's um, all for one. And ah, there you yes, are. Yes, there we go. Oh, they're here. They're here. Excellent. Marvelous. Excellent. You laugh at this bit. Oh, you're not laughing at that bit. I'll try it like this. No, oh, yeah, that worked. Okay, great. <laughs> So Lovely. yeah, con the continuing development of that, but de deadlines um, and the, the, the challenge that they are, I find inspiring and inspires me to work because <laughs> because otherwise I could just I could easily easily get distracted by a lot by learning other things. <laughs> and we're coming on to distraction shortly. So anything else ah, inspires you? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Well, we do that now. <laughs> yes. Distracted by two things that never fail to grab your attention. If we missed out on inspiration, do go back. But I'm just thinking. No, I, think, I think we segue. did three. I think we did three. Did we do? I did. Yeah. You do the math. You, you're the magician. I, I get lost a bit. But let's go for the two things that never fail. It's my show, but I do get lost. Uh, the, the, uh, one of the other, okay, distractions, things that will help me if I haven't got a deadline are an unfinished puzzle or a puzzle. I like puzzles. Uh, so if, and it doesn't matter where I am, if I see, a, if, it's, if there's a Rubik's Cube, that someone hasn't solved and it's in the corner i i, I will see it it's like it's like oh, oh. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> by the way but we'd have been very good childhood friends because i never never ever managed to solve a rubik's cube so in my bedroom there would always have been or wherever else in the house it would be there would ne i'd never have solved it <laughs> well I'd have, I'd have come round. i'd have come round and solved it for you and then, <laughs> and then yes 1980 i've spent a lot of time at school that was that was one of the ways i started making some friends was that there was three or four of us that just became obsessed with this new puzzle and we spent weeks just just working it working it working it and now it's month. gone mad there are films oh. on youtube of people oh, it's, being too blindfolded with music in their ears going insane solving them while they're juggling them and solving them in in seconds blindfolded and you just what's the world record at the moment 3.7 seconds or something insane I just, I, I was proud I could do it in under a minute. I, could, I, was, I was usually around 40 seconds, 45 seconds, but, but uh, that was, and I found my own way of doing it. I, I've realised now there's, there's much, much smarter ways of solving it. I'm, okay. I'm tempted, I'm very tempted to learn one uh, or learn the new techniques, but then it's just, oh, do I, oh, yeah, well, me. I can solve it if it's there. <laughs> yes. And and a pack of cards always will always distract me. So it's, it's for a similar feeling as is the yes. it's a pack of cards. And are you going now. for that for a combo of one thing that distracts you, puzzles, cards, Rubik's Cubes, or you got uh, That's all that no, that's the combo. That's all that sort of thing. Like unfinished yeah. crossword puzzles, not so much jigsaw puzzles, but more those metal, you know, those Chinese metal puzzles. Ah, uh, yes, can, yes. If I see one that I've not seen before, I'd i want to know how it works. I'd want to solve it and, and play with it. Um that's that tactile i just did a visual oh, thing of the extent of my magic capability there i did a sort of did you see me join that I, I, you, you, oh oh oh, oh, hey. ah, anyway, oh, oh great for a podcast some magic tricks happening oh, there oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> very enjoyable thank you dear so now uh, a quirky or unusual fict about you no no, no the other oh, the other oh. the other i've got another distraction i'm so sorry i thought i'd comboed them but no come back no 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 they're, 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 as combo as in that's one Thank you. And then, so combine that. The other one is nature, really. It's because I, I was thinking, oh God, what is it? It's a spider's web. So I'll always watch a spider making a yeah. web because it's just amazing. I don't understand. I'd love to know what they're experiencing and what their experience of existence is. I wish I could find them 
to do to to do these complex structures and you sort of look and they the strand they reinforce some strands that you just yeah, we're all we're all just, thinking i wish i could fire silk out my butt when we're looking oh at yeah absolutely day. absolutely but also stars at night a, a, a night sky and uh the the way a wave hits a, a rock all these things i will just just be distracted by and, and want to understand or or I think, yeah, it's, it's something about understanding or, or experience and understanding of. Yes. And, and they all just, they, they're all, they're all things that give me sense, a sense of wonder, I suppose. That's, that's what that is. So it's things that give me a sense of wonder, but nature is nature. I yeah. commend you and I love the cut of your jib. I love that. Thank you. Very exciting. It's, it's, it's lovely. And now a quirky or unusual fact about you, Peter Clifford, that we couldn't know until you tell us. I I haven't had a sip of alcohol for 18, nearly 19 years. 18 years, nine months, eight days. Wow. There That's we go. very, very long and specific, if I may say so. Well, I know the date that I had my last drink. Um, <laughs> I don't remember it very well, but I know, I know the date. I know the date. And if I may, was that why? Because you didn't remember it and therefore you had to stop? Or is it, it just... Was something, a... It was something that it was... <sighs> Jack was pregnant with M, with our first firstborn, and um, I I had tried stopping drinking, and I used to drink. I used to, I was really good at drinking. Again, I'm very I'm very, I'm very all or nothing, so I could I, I tried moderating several times, but it, it it never worked. It was so doing nothing, having none, is much clearer and easier. Yeah, yeah. Than, or I'll have an occasional glass because it would it would I'd stop drinking, have none, and then I'd sort of have an occasional glass with cheese at the end of a, a meal, and and I'd say, oh, just can I have a sip of your glass just while we're here, right? And then like three days later, they'd be sharing my bottle, and it would just, and it was, I don't think I was, uh, I think I used to have dark moods because of it, and I, I thought that a child would be so egocentric that they would think that my dark mood was to do with them. Oh, wow. And yeah, yeah. I didn't really want that. I didn't want to be responsible for that damage, I think, or that potential damage or that lack of clarity or that misinterpretation of the, of the, of the little being um, who I was supposed to be responsible for. So that's, that's what made me stop. And then I think life and myself were all just a bit better for it. So I thought, hmm, I don't think I was, I'm alcoholic, I don't know, but it, but certainly tendencies and, and, uh, and I, I was really good at drinking that. There'd be often after shows, there'd be like three or four rounds going uh, in the cast and I'd be in all of them. So, cause no one, yes. no one else drank fast enough and it was, uh, so yeah, so there you go. There's a there's a there's a, an interesting. That's that was great. That had great seismic depth to it because you looked. I, I was assuming that you were really struggling to find one, but you actually had a really seismic one to land there. Uh, well, no, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure what to say. I mean, I, 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 yeah. I mean, I'd sort of done the gravestones. My dad showed me a skull once when I was a kid because <laughs> he because one of the greatest in children. Anyway, anyway, I'm, not, you go, I'm you not fishing for more. I've done it. I... I've done it now. I've done that one. I've done that one. There you go. So I'm Thank still you, not mate. still not drinking. But I remember it was it was it was December the 27th, the year before M was born, that I stopped. So that's how I know the maths. Uh, not not because I'm going just for today or, or a day at a time, though I'm though I I am. And sometimes I do feel, oh, it'd be nice just to sit down with a, a, a single malt, a single malt with a friend. That would be lovely. And, and maybe I will. I don't know. Never say never, but not, not yet. Not for now. We have shaken your tree, your tree most majestically. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to stay in the clearing, move away from your tree. And now we're going to talk about alchemy and gold, if we may. Mm -hmm. So when you are at purpose and in flow, Peter Clifford, what are you absolutely happiest doing in what it is you're here to reveal to the world? Creating. Creating with people. So it's sort of that, which is a sort of puzzle solving, but it, feel, it feels like it's puzzle solving with, uh, with uh, something to share. 
So puzzle solving with purpose and a sharing. Puzzle, but and a sharing, something to share, creating a story to share, creating, because everything is a story. So every, all, everything I do is, is, is story. Uh, I've realized uh, and and also the interaction that you create with the audience is is a story that they can tell created in the moment and that you can tell so it's it's something that's and live as well I prefer creating something live with people that's that's what I enjoy doing most whether that's in a rehearsal room in a cafe in in my house or even over zoom Create. And if I may, there's a lovely reincorporation gift there of again, all for one and one for all. One for all. That's very good. <laughs> lovely. Um, and now I'm yeah. going to award you with a cake, if I may. So rather than just splotching okay. it in your face, this is now moving towards the sort of legacy of our more conversation. Of, more of a pie. Together. More of a pie. Than a cake. A cake. So okay. do you like cake or do you prefer pie? I oh I didn't hey. like I, uh, I I I some cake I will eat cake I haven't got much of a sweet tooth so I was going to sort of say a, a savory rice cake maybe I could have that or Jaffa, cake. Jaffa cakes Jaffa cakes I like I like Jaffa cakes okay so if we may we're going to get a big wadge of Jaffa cakes which is your metaphor now for um, interpreting that through the lens of cake and this is the legacy of the conversation whereby. Yeah. The cherry on the cake is to invite you to answer stuff or think about stuff like what's a favourite inspirational quote that's always given you sucker and pulled you towards your future? Mm -hmm. What's the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? And or what advice might you proffer to a younger version of yourself? And then finally, inspired by Here Comes a Cheeky Bit of Shakespeare, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players, you know, the epic uh, Seven Ages of Man speech. Mm -hmm. And you talked beautifully about the gravestone that has your name on it, Jayquees. Yeah. Um, how, when all is said and done, Peter Clifford, would you most like to be remembered? Yes. Okay. So it's quite a multi layer. All of those. All of those. Good luck with that. And I'll see you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay. Um... So quotes, am I allowed to do some that I've come up with? I'll, I'll do, do some that I sort of distill. I love, I love quotes. I love finding quotes. And that's another thing that distracts me. Actually, is I, I love um, quotations and, and things that are brought down into a pithy one-liner. So for me, it would be, and I'd give these just advice to myself as well, so I can combine those. And I'd sort of say it's worth the effort. Whatever it is, it's worth the effort. Uh, and one that I've that I came up with recently a little while ago is, is that an idea is a direction and not a destination mm -hmm. so that when you have an idea and I find that that helps keep the flow going of creativity because you don't think you've solved something it's just like actually that's a fantastic direction let's go that way and go and then you go you carry on in that direction and life's like that too isn't it so whatever you do in life it's just you carry on in that direction don't feel you've got there there's that'll come that'll come <laughs> your destination will come at one point anyway and i and it'll be nice to finish in the middle of a story i don't want to i don't want to finish at the end of a story because because then what will i've been doing i've been treading water from the end of the story to the, it's like retirement i don't quite people's attitude to that I don't quite get that you sort of think oh stop there and it's like no nah, that's it's just I love that I want to end in direction. In, no one's ever I've never heard anyone say that I want to finish in the middle of a story how lovely mm, yeah yeah so other people can tell it then other people can take it on so that's those those are my inspirational quotes I think that that I <laughs> that I try and live by it's it's worth the effort you're going to learn a lot and I, I, I'll stick on it as well and um because learning, the attitude of learning, I think, is is very creative because it, it gives a good mental attitude. I remember when I was first, first going out to work with David Blaine, I was thinking on the plane out, I was thinking, what the hell's going on? I've got nothing to offer this man. I'm because he could have anyone he wants in the world to come and work for him now. He could he could do he can have anyone. What the hell am I doing? I've got nothing. And then I just thought, I'm gonna learn so much. Um, this is so exciting. I'm gonna I'm gonna get to learn so much doing this. And going in with that attitude of, of wanting to learn just made me really creative and more useful and probably why it lasted six years because I suddenly I was suddenly there going, no, let's learn what, what's going on here. How does this work? What's going on? How can we make that work? How can we work with this? So which was which was lovely. So that was good. And um so gravestone, 
uh, legacy, I think, uh, just as, as someone who helped. That's it. I'd like to be remembered as someone who helped. So it's a positive, I think, a positive, had a positive impact, mostly. So here lies Peter Clifford, someone who helped. Someone who helped. Yeah. Um, I want to come back to that in a moment. Um, mm. Just because you're being so wonderful in the alchemy and gold you're giving me, uh, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Ooh, again, so much. Um, take uh, time uh, you, you're given to I don't that's that's a, a, advice I've been given uh, I think be careful because practice makes permanent oh gosh oh that was worth the wait thank you practice makes permanent which is so you have be reflective in in your practice when you're learning because the channel that you're doing and whatever that is whether it's a a, a, a habit of speaking a habit of being Whatever the habit is that you're practicing, reinforcing, you're making it more permanent each time you do it. So be careful that it's a direction you want to go in, I'd say, and that, 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 it's, that it's an improvement, not, not that you're just practicing something, oh, this is, and, and you make it, because you will make it permanent. And it's much easier to do it right in the first place than to then have to relearn it. And just crystallize that again, say that again, just as the pithy poof. That's there. Practice makes permanent. Lovely. I'm, I'm going to come back to the gravestone in a moment, but where can we find out about you on the internet? Because I remember asking you before we started today, and you were like, <laughs> "Oh, I don't know." So, I'm I'm very hard to find. <laughs> <I'm> very, <laughs> I've been very lucky that I haven't had to push myself in 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 that way, and and I get asked to do things and fun things with that. But I'm I'm on I'm on Facebook. Uh, Peter Clifford and I'm on Twitter as uh, Charogmatic which was I used to write crosswords and Charogmatic was my was my crossword name. Um, oh, so at Charogmatic. At Charogmatic C-A-R-O-G-M-A-T-I-C because it sounds like charismatic and it's an anagram of magic actor that's that was that was the uh, you see awesome the pretension <laughs> the affectation that came that brought that about. And, uh, oh, I'm going to be at the Alma Tavern at Christmas. Oh. I'm going to be doing a magic show at the Alma Tavern uh, from the 20th to the 30th of December. And then I'm Magical Mythologies, the show that the only, Hannah Drake, the director, she's the only person who's seen it because she, she was there helping me and directing me for a couple of days. So, yeah, that's so when that's you do that, going. you go, and this is for hannah and then the show. This is for hannah. This is, it, that's but that's coming back that will come back uh next spring i think yes but it will happen i'll do that at the, at the wardrobe theater but so alma alma tavern at christmas is if you want to come and see some magic some christmas peter clifford's covid compliant christmas conjuring magic matters lovely go. bits of linguistic loveliness there so um yes You've been listening to me, Chris Grimes, and this has been Peter Clifford. As this is your moment in the sunshine, and we've got about a minute and a half to go, if we want to, and we don't have to, but is there anything else you'd like to say as a result of having been here? Uh, it's it's lovely. It's I'm I'm I'm. It's been a lovely lovely hour, or so less than an hour. But um, yeah, I, and I I haven't really got much else to say. I mean, I could I could chundle on from hours I've discovered uh, <laughs> it was amazing that I did that 20 minute <laughs> that 20 minute talk because uh, when I'm when I'm asked and there's no deadline there's no finish I'll just I'll and just again I, I, I compliment your conversion rate 20 minutes to six years of work so yes you've been <laughs> listening to me Chris Grimes this has been Peter Clifford your life and times with me Chris Grimes this is also on UK Health Radio so until next time in the clearing to your good health and to your sincere good health as well Peter Clifford do look out for us on Buzzsprout as well and also I, I'm in the habit now of doing these as live on Facebook and on LinkedIn too so thank you very much indeed Peter Clifford thank you Chris Grimes and uh, good night. <laughs> <laughs>